animals or Rob Schneider? You managed to do all three here, which is uh, quite I think, brave of you. Uh, I think that that rule, uh, the rule about not working with kids, animals, or Rob Schneider, uh, pertains mostly to actors because you don't want to be upstaged. For a director, it's a dream. It's fine. But a Disney film starring Adam Sandler, it seems almost like an oxymoron. I don't know whether when it came to approaching it that, you, you know, you realize here's Adam, a naturally very funny guy who has a certain mischief about him, and you're going to put him in a, a framework of, of making it a, a kid's film. Was that, I don't know if there was any struggle because he likes to riff a little bit, whether that was kind of strange to begin with or... You know, n now that Adam is a father, I think he has a sense of what is appropriate and not appropriate, and I, I think that he really respects that and he knows what he wants his daughters to hear and see and you know be exposed to and so I think that this was pretty easy for him to to fall into and what was really um, the missive for me what was really important was that everybody said you have to Disneyfy and you have to family you know family orient Adam and so but it was very seldom that I had to rein him in he really knew because there were kids on the set every day you know and he he didn't want to swear and he didn't want to act out. He didn't want to do anything um, that uh, that was too, that was inappropriate. And I think that that and so uh, you know everybody always wants to see like our outtakes and our bloopers because they think that they're going to be so nasty. But there there really wasn't. Even Russell Russell never swore. Russell never did anything inappropriate. It was like completely uh, like it was. It was borderline dull. No. <laughs> no, it was good. It was really, really, it, we had a lot of fun, but it was really good, clean fun. And it's interesting because you can, because Adam's sense of humor and Russell's sense of humor completely stays alive in the movie. It's just void of, um, you know, sexual anecdote or foul language or violence. I know with, with someone like Adam too, and, uh, um, most directors would take that Judd Apatow approach of just let the cameras run and, and let a scene run and see what, what, what sort of bounces off. And I don't know if that was for you the case of sort of stepping back a little and just see what he what what he might come up with, or whether it was pretty tight on the script because you had a it was it a was story. pretty it was pretty tight on the script because first of all because it's not just a character piece. You know, the movie has a real arc and a true momentum, and certain things have to happen in order for other things to happen in this movie. Um, and it wasn't just about sitting around and talking about life. So, th so he was, you know, Adam is really smart and he really understands what uh, the movies that he's making are about. So there, wa there was always that forward momentum and he was very respectful uh, of the needs of the script and he knew what each scene had to be about. So there was a certain amount of improvisation, but it was very much within the framework of what had to happen within a scene. I know he describes his character Skeeter Bronson as a, a cinder fella. Yeah. This idea that, that you know, he's just an did, ordinary Did guy he who, say cinder fella? Well, I've read that, that he's, that's his quote. I say that. He got that from me. He, that's what, he that's liked what it enough to I take it. I love that he stole that from me because that is really what he is. He starts out the movie as a cinder fella, and, and, uh, and it just goes from there. And then when it came to shooting it then, I don't know whether there was a, a kind of a blueprint because it's quite a, you know, it's quite a, an imaginative movie and you've got a lot of, you know, the fantasy scenes, the, the, the kind of stories come to life and all that. And I'm guessing that was quite a challenge because you've got to blend a fairly kind of realistic on one level, but then you're, you're going into fantasy and you're going into magical kind of moments of, of, of dreamlike kind of sequences. I don't know whether all that was a nightmare or whether it was actually no, quite fun. No, that was actually just real fun. I mean, we, you know, we, we, like I said, we really knew what the movie we were making was. And we knew, uh, you know, part of the fun for him, which I talked to him about when I offered him a movie, was, you know, like you get to you get to play all these different characters. Um, but it was really interesting in the beginning when we first started making the movie. He was a much more um, crusty, kind of uh, high end person. And and as the movie, as we as we kept developing the movie, it became very clear that he really wanted to play the downtrodden working guy um, who'd really been passed over and not a guy with a guy, uh, you know, he, it really helped his arc as a character. And and it also made it made the um, dream sequences more wish fulfillment. And that was really, really fun. So it, it was it was not a nightmare. It was really fun. I should ask, of course, about uh, you, you're, you're the man who's made John Waters a very happy and, and, and finally a very wealthy man. Yes. And this idea that Hairspray 2 is, is coming around. I'm hoping that everything is going well for that because I, I spoke with John recently. He was in Dublin doing shows and uh -huh. he's just so kind of amazed and delighted that, that there's an audience out there, a mainstream audience that now embrace him. But how is Hairspray 2 coming along? Uh, Hairspray 2 is coming along fine. Uh, you know, he, uh, John Waters wrote an outline. Um, a lot of the ideas are fabulous. A lot of the ideas are insane. And... Um, 
and that's why it's John Waters. And so now we're out to writers, and we're just figuring stuff out, and hopefully it'll, you know, it's on track. Let's put it that way. Hairspray 2 is on track, and I love that there is energy and appetite for it. That's really cool. Wow. Appetite being an operative word. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice Thank to talk you. to you. Yeah. Nice you. to talk to you too, sir. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it.